The People's Progressive Party has announced its prime ministerial candidate for the 2015 general and regional elections. After weeks of much deliberations, the party unanimously arrived at the choice of Her Excellency Elizabeth Harper. Today, I'm truly delighted to be able to interview this distinguished woman who will provide greater insights into her background, family life, and career. Ambassador Harper, thank you for providing us with this opportunity to really have such an intimate interview with you. Thank you, Olive. And you can call me Liz. Uh, well, that will take some, some getting used to a woman of your stature, <laughs> Ambassador Harper. But I'll try with a Liz just in case I slip up. Before we talk more about your background and your qualifications, tell us, how do you feel about the possibility of being the next Prime Minister of Guyana, noting the next female Prime Minister of Guyana? I feel honored and humbled to have been selected by the PPPC as their Prime Ministerial candidate. I believe that I can use the almost 40 years that I've spent in the Foreign Service promoting Guyana's interests abroad to contribute even further to Guyana's development, particularly in areas such as the creation of jobs, a better education system, reducing crime, and one of the issues that is important to me is ensuring that we can create an environment that is conducive to allowing our young children, our youths, our grandchildren to remain in this country and build Guyana because the youth are our future. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Now, tell us more about the 36 years that you would have spent um, as a public servant, as a humble, dedicated, loyal public servant um, serving Guyana. I'm a little bit more curious as to what were those years of experience like? Well, I started in 1976 as a clerk in the registry and uh, moved into the diplomatic service. I moved through the ranks. I served at the Guyana High Commission in London for about four and a half years, came back home in 1996, and after that I was appointed Director General in 2001. One of the things that I believe was critical to the development of my career path was an instance where I had passed a file to the desk officer and he, I had made a notation on it with some advice. And he took it to the permanent secretary and both of them thought that, well, she has some potential. So I was moved from the registry into another department. And I believe that was a turning point in my career. Um, it taught me that to take initiative was not a bad thing. Um, I don't think you should ever be shy to take initiative. So how many children do you have today? I have three children, two from my first marriage, Melissa and Regan, and one from my current marriage, Natasha. I'm very proud of them all. And I have two grandchildren who I dote on, Kaya and Sophia. You would have been married twice, weren't you? Yes. You've had two marriages. What was that first marriage like? Well, first of all, he's still the father of my two children. Yes. And sometimes we have to respect That's that. That's right. Yes. But uh, the marriage didn't last. And uh, because he didn't respect my decision, he didn't support my decision um, to further my career at the university, my education. And uh, he became abusive also. <clears throat> and I just felt that that wasn't right for me to subject myself to that or my children to that treatment <clears throat> or that environment it was very unhealthy. Was it, when you talk abuse, was it um, physical? Physical, abuse. okay. All right. But during that time, um, were, you, were you employed with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs? Yes, I was. All right, so you're pregnant at the age of 17. What was your mother's reaction like? I know she probably would have had, wow, a whole long list of things for you to achieve. But being pregnant at 17, what was that like for your mother? Well, she didn't make me feel 
less loved. Matter of fact, I, I know she was disappointed because I was about to do my A-levels. And uh, she was very supportive. And my four sisters were also. And I know that mom had it hard because she was a single parent also. My dad died when I was 12 years old. Um, but she was strong. And I believe that that is a strength that I took from her, and she helped me through it. As a young mother, new job, struggling with university, how did you balance all of that? It, it was challenging. Did that experience help? Well, obviously, you would have had some serious experiences and challenges um, coming from an abusive relationship, and then you would have had a second marriage, and you have one more child in that marriage? Yes, I do, and my husband is extremely supportive and very interested in what I do. Wow, so it, it's, that different. It's, it's different. <laughs> totally it's different. Totally different. What is that, totally what, different. What, what is that like? Um, does that help to bring out more of who you are and help you to climb to the heights that you want to reach? It helps because when you have a, a spouse who can say to you, just leave everything, I will do it. So I could just go to work and concentrate on what I have to do. Except when I, I have a particular chore that he's given me that I didn't complete because I forgot. <laughs> But other than that, it's, it's helpful, it really is, because you don't have to worry on the domestic side. He takes care of everything, and, and also he's also very attentive to my work, and, and it helps. Um, and we're a blended family, actually, because he also has a daughter, and she lives with us. And I consider her as my daughter. Wow. So I have three wow. daughters, technically. Wow. <laughs> wow, powerful, really, really powerful indeed. But did all of this, did this help you in making that decision that I am going to be the next female prime minister of Guyana? Did that help you to make that decision? It certainly was a factor because when I thought about what I could do, what particular area could I concentrate on? Apart from others, what particular area could I concentrate on? The domestic violence is real in our society. And me being able to tell my story from where I came from what I've become, how I did it. I feel that uh, I could encourage women. I could also encourage interest groups in society to help to rid us of this. And also young women too, who are looking for role models um, you know, encouraging them to empower themselves. Simply by listening to your story, those women out there who are walking similar path which you would have traversed many years ago, they're already seeing you as a role model. I hope so. Yeah, I know they are. <laughs> you know they are. Now, um, l let us examine more now your role and the decision that you've made. Um, are you, are you, um, did you hesitate um, when that was proposed to you to be the next prime ministerial candidate? I hesitated because I had to pray about it. That was my number one priority. And secondly, of course, I had to consult with my family, which I did. And I, my family was very supportive. They were fully behind me. And I believe I felt led to accept the offer. Now, this comes with an entirely different approach. Your, your life is now being screened. Your family will be screened. How prepared are you 
to deal with all of the criticisms and believe me you will have negative criticisms coming your way but how prepared are you to, to deal with that I'm trying to look at it differently because I'm trying to understand that this is a new role first of all it it will I will be in the spotlight my family will be my children but for me I want the issues to be highlighted the issues that people in Guyana want us to focus on tell us what are some of the issues that you would want to to um, to address and to use a plat as platform during the next few weeks we should say leading up to the May 11th general and regional elections well, certainly, well, from the background that I have come from, the preservation of Guyana's sovereignty and territorial integrity is paramount. And that is something that we will be talking about. What has the foreign ministry been doing uh, in the last five years to advance Guyana's uh, sovereignty, to, to protect, to preserve, to maintain, to ensure that we, we get the support for, you know, for Guyana's sovereignty that from the international community. And also the economic growth, which is key to building Guyana's future we have to look at job creation we have to look at the education system which i i, I must uh, say here um, has been recognized as one that uh, has stood out in the millennium development goals president ramatar was 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 requested by the UN Secretary General to join him in his Education for All initiative because of what Guyana has been doing in the education sector. And so with Minister Manik Chan's um, focus as well, education sector has really taken off. And so that is something that, that I know will be given priority in terms of strengthening the programs that are already in place. Um, also reducing crime. I, I believe we should have a zero tolerance where crime is concerned. And uh, in order for that to happen, we have to have certain things as a foundation. We have to, have to, we have to ensure that we have um, families are strong children feel secure, they're educated, they're trained, and so you also look at the skill sector as well, um, improving the tech, technical and vocational skills training so that we have opportunities, equal opportunities are available to all. Because once you, once you have an educated population and workforce, you have a better standard of living, better quality of life, and, and the society becomes more comfortable. It, it, it is a more stable environment that would encourage investment, both foreign and local. And that is important because if you want to have a stable environment where you can encourage people to do business, then the economy could take off and I, I stress local investment because my son has built his own business he's a self-made businessman he's a remarkable boy and uh, he set up his own company my daughter works with him she has great organizational skills and so I, I see the potential for young people to 
develop themselves, develop their own businesses in Guyana, and to remain in Guyana. It's, this is where, this is, you know, this is where we were born. We have a lot of people that are leaving, looking for greener pastures um, outside of Guyana. And so this is definitely something that you, would, you, you are going to address. I would like to. Right, and to ensure that the, the people, the skills are, the skills come back to Guyana so that we can work towards them developing, continuing development and the progress in Guyana. Are you ready? to be the next Prime Minister of Guyana? I'm ready for the challenge because whatever I put my mind to, I like to succeed. And this is not for Elizabeth Harper. This is for all the women out there who see me as a female prime ministerial candidate. Um, and this is, this is for Guyana, the country that I have lived in and served for just about f uh, four decades. I recall during an earlier conversation with you, Ambassador Harper, you mentioned um, your passion for providing a better quality of life for elderly. Can you care to expand on that a little? Yes, I have a passion for the elderly. Um, I cared for my mom until she was 91 years old and so I, I know what it is for the elderly to need care and sometimes full-time care. I know what it is sometimes to feel when your, your uh, grandmother or your mother might be doing things over and over again and you might not recognize why they're doing that. You might think, oh, they're just getting old. In this case, my mother had Alzheimer's and uh, that really took us to another level in terms of how to deal with someone with Alzheimer's. So for me, my passion and my husband's passion, because he sits on the National Commission for the Elderly, actually. But for me, it is important that we acknowledge the contribution that, that the, the elderly have made in our society, building our homes to the development of our country. And we need to honor and respect them. And we, we need to address their needs. So I hope that that could also be another issue that uh, could be addressed. All right. And are you prepared for the campaign trail? I'm prepared for the campaign trail. Just before we wrap up, is there anything else you would like to say to Guyanese? I want to reiterate what I told President Ramatar, that I was honored to be selected by him and the People's Progressive Party to be their prime ministerial candidate. I'm excited to have the opportunity, if it presents itself, <laughs> to serve in another capacity, serve in a higher capacity. And, and I see it as public service to develop Guyana even further and to work with everybody to develop this land that, that we're blessed to live in. Wonderful, wonderful. Ambassador Harper, thank you very much for this, giving us this opportunity into the warmth and the comfort of your home. Thank you. And having such an intimate discussion with you. And thank you for opening up and sharing those dreadful experiences and how those experiences have helped to mold you into the woman and the next Prime Minister that you'll become. Thank, thank you, Olive. Thank you. And to our viewers, thank you for joining us. Bye now.